Good morning, everybody. We're going to get started in just a second here. Uh, got a lot of people rolling in. Um, to want to welcome you to uh, the state of virtual events in 2021. Uh, we've been gathering a lot of insights of hundreds of different brands running well over 20,000 experiences now. Uh, and we're really excited to share this, this knowledge with you and this wisdom, uh, which will hopefully help, help you in your uh, experiential journey. Uh, my name is Jonathan Yaffe. I'm the CEO and co-founder of AnyRoad. Uh, I started AnyRoad uh, about seven years ago to bring uh, software to scale experiences and, and understand the impact of experiences through experiential data. Uh, we work with brands all over the world, and we'll jump into that in a, in a second. So a couple housekeeping things. Um, oh, people continue to roll in. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, a couple housekeeping things. Um, now, first of all, we want this to be very interactive. So we have Q&A, uh, a little down, down at the bottom, you see the little Q&A thing. Please ask questions. We have some that came in ahead of uh, ahead of this, this webinar, but we will uh, address everything at the end. So please, if anything comes up. Um, if you need to adjust your audio settings, down at the bottom left, probably down that way. Um, we have Twitter, so feel free to tweet at us. We are at any road, hashtag experiential, because that's what we are all about. Uh, and we are also recording this uh, with, with both the uh, me and the slides, and we will be sharing this um, afterwards. So if you missed anything, if you wanna share with a friend, uh, we, we wanna make sure that all of this, all of this great uh, information that the team put together uh, is, gets into your hands. So any road is a platform to power experiential at uh, large enterprises all over the world. Uh, these are a number of our of our customers uh, who we work with to, not only to scale these experiential programs, but also to pull in data showing the ROI of them. Um, when COVID hit, we expanded uh, what we do to focus not only on offline in real life experiences, but also digital experiences. Uh, I'm, I'm excited to see a lot of our uh, customers on the call here as well as a lot of new names. Um, and we're really excited that you're, you're joining us here. So uh, we'll start with a quick agenda. Um, first, we're gonna go over insights from a survey of 100 brands uh, running 20,000 experiences. The team put this together. A uh, lot of really well-known brands participated in this. Uh, just to kind of give give you a lay of the land for what we're seeing. Obviously, this is changing really quickly, so we're continuous, continuing to update this. Um, I'm gonna give you my perspective on the future of virtual events. Uh, TLDR, even though real life is coming back with a vengeance, I believe uh, virtual events are here to stay. Uh, then we're gonna dive into some bonus insights and we're gonna wrap it up with some Q&A. Cool? Cool. All right. Uh, first, we're going to start with a poll uh, just to kind of get, get everyone's feeling about the state of things. So, so when do you expect in-person events to return at scale? Uh, we have a couple options here. The first half of 2021, before by June, the second half of 2021, not until 2022. I have no idea, I can't tell right now, or they were never gonna return at scale. People are always gonna stay at their home, sit on their sofas for the rest of all eternity. Please answer the poll. Would love everyone's perspective on this. Give this one second here. All right, oh my gosh. We have a lot of pessimists in the house, don't we? Uh, only one, only two percent of people think it's going to return in the first half of 2021. We have 20 percent in the second half of 2022. Overwhelmingly, two thirds of you think in-person experiences and, and events are not going to return until next year, 2022. Luckily, we all know that they're going to come back. Only one person, or two percent, uh, thought they're never going to return at scale. So. Uh, a little more pessimistic than I would have expected, um, but uh, but interesting, interesting. Uh, my my personal take is uh, from what I'm seeing, second half of 2021 for sure, um, but it also depends on uh, what country we're in. All right, uh, let's jump back into it. Uh, so uh, 
quick executive summary just to, to go through this. Um, most of our respondents, remember we have well over 100 respondents here, are new to online experiences. Uh, over half ran their first virtual experiences in 2020, obviously as a direct result of COVID. Uh, Zoom is by far the most popular technology. 50% uh, of respondents said it is their platform of choice. We're going to jump into that because that was a bit surprising to us. Um, expectations on budgets are bullish. Um, and we see brands increasing their bu budgets constantly for this. 58% believe that their spend for online experiences will grow even into the reopening. Uh, and satisfaction with online experiences is high with a whopping 91% saying they're a success. Not that surprising. We don't have that much else to do in the middle of a pandemic. Uh, so we're looking at 100, over 100 brands here. Um, Real quick on methodology, because it's important. Um, you can see the split there of large versus smaller companies. Uh, most of the people were uh, managers and directors and VPs at uh, in marketing roles, customer experience roles, and operations roles. These are generally the type of people that we work with most of the time, um, because that's usually where experiences lie, especially experiences that are meant to change behavior uh, or meant to change consumer spend. Um, and then you can see by industry, we're looking at technology, food and beverage, consulting. Um, and this is about two thirds in uh, the United States. Uh, the rest spread all over the world. Um, Europe, Asia, Latin America, Africa. We're very, we have a very diverse, uh, very diverse peer group. So let's talk about virtual event goals for a minute. So the biggest goal was engagement followed quickly by awareness. So really these are two of the top priorities. You can see that revenue generation was much smaller and selling, selling things either directly or indirectly was a lot smaller piece of it. And when I say directly or indirectly, uh, direct revenue refers to actually selling tickets uh, and, and actually getting revenue through there. Um, and indirect revenue is saying, please come to this webinar and then we're gonna sell you something later on. Um, but really it's all about engagement and awareness. You know, the best CEOs that I know um, during this pandemic said, we don't care whether our customers are in store or online. We need to be wherever they are. And if they're sitting on their sofas, we need to be there in their living room. Um, and I think that the, that this data really, really reflects that. Uh, technology choices. This was shocking. Zoom. Over half of our respondents are using Zoom, followed by Microsoft Teams, Facebook Live, Instagram Live, and then a bunch of long tail. What's really interesting is we're seeing a lot of startups and a lot of new market entrants uh, really try to take over uh, digital events. We didn't really see them at all. Um, I, I, I do think that's going to change probably in the next six months, but Zoom is still such a flexible platform, can plug into a bunch of other other platforms. And really, when it comes to reliability and scale, uh, Zoom totally led the way. Social was actually kind of surprising. One of the problems with social and the reason that a lot of organizations do not use Facebook Live and Instagram Live, even though the reach is there, is because they hold that data and they don't let you know what's going on there. They don't give you that engagement data. Um, and so really what we're seeing is Zoom uh, ended up being by far the most flexible for for a lot of our uh, respondents. Event volumes. Um, this was actually a bit surprising too. So over half of respondents run less than four events per month, but we're seeing this change super quickly. In fact, we expect this year that over five experiences per month is gonna be by far and away the biggest category here. Um, and what we see, what we're seeing behind the scenes is that people running over 21 experiences per month is actually accelerating the fastest. Um, why? Because what brands often do is they start by, uh, by offering some experiences, testing them out zero to four a month. When they actually have that engagement data and they can show that it works, they're actually doubling down and making this a core part of their engagement strategy. Um, turns out virtual experiences are by far and away uh, better engagement than any kind of social posts. Uh, and when, when people have the data behind it, they double down on it. 
measuring effectiveness. So again, we're really looking at engagement numbers. Um, it's good that a lot of brands are doing looking at registrations, attendees, uh, tr trying to figure out who's coming, what kind of people are coming. Um, but, and then only 25% currently are actually collecting feedback and measuring satisfaction. There are a lot of different tools to do this. Uh, a lot of them plug into Zoom, uh, but really what, what, what it's all about is actually figuring out, I just spent $10 million this quarter on virtual experiences. What is my ROI there, right? What, what, how much is this engagement worth to me? How much is this social selling happening? Uh, and ultimately, should I, should I double down? Should I continue this spend? Um, the biggest barriers uh, is, is how to measure revenue impact. And so uh, that's actually why we created AnyRoad is to be able to take this data from virtual experiences and connect it directly into customer spend. Uh, and satisfaction. So we can actually say people who came to these digital experiences actually ended up spending three times more. Success ratings. Uh, I, we have a lot of super confident uh, respondents here. 92% uh, of people said that their virtual events were successful. Again, not that surprising. People are sitting on their couches. They want to be entertained. They want to learn things. They want to be engaged. People are yearning for connection. Um, a, th a, third, uh, a third of these people said that their experiences were super successful. We didn't dive in that much to figure out why, uh, but this, this alone is telling that people are very happy with their virtual events. People are receiving great feedback from it uh, and continuing to accelerate their investments. Um, common challenges. So again, virtual events are pretty new. Remember over half of over half of respondents ran virtual events for the first time this year. Um, demonstrating impact was by far and away the, the biggest challenge um, and even identifying suitable KPIs. You can't measure KPIs if you don't identify what's happening. Um, so uh, we have got a lot of, lot of actually text feedback from this, nothing beats face to face. I agree, uh, but we do see virtual events uh, scaling significantly. And we do see tools coming out to be able to not just track attendance. That's easy. That's table stakes. If we're not tracking attendance, we shouldn't be doing this in the first place. Audio visual scaling. Again, a lot of those problems are taken care of. Uh, but really when it comes to demonstrating impact and identifying those KPIs so we can measure and optimize them, um, that's really the, the crux of where this industry is moving to. So we're going to run another quick poll. Do you think online experiences are here to stay? Really interested to see what we all think about this. Uh, so yes, no, we're not sure. Simple one here. Do we think online experiences are here to stay? Or is everything going to shift back to offline and, uh, and, and, and revert to the meme? Give this one second here. All right, the results are in. Lots of bullish people here. 88% of people think virtual events are here to stay um, with only 6% thinking that they're never gonna, that, that people will never use Zoom again. Um, so that's really interesting. Um, I wanna tell you about my mom. Uh, my mom lives in Brooklyn and uh, pre-COVID she had never heard of Zoom before. Uh, in fact, you know, two weeks into quarantine, she said, Jonathan, are, are, are you doing that Zoom thing? I heard about the Zoom thing. The world has fundamentally changed. Now, every single day, she's on Zoom lectures, Zoom theater, Zoom concerts, uh, Zoom events. Uh, she, she's a big fan of Clubhouse now. Uh, and the world, I think, has moved five to 10 years accelerated into the digital adoption. Um, and when people like my mom are comfortable and it is societally, societally okay for her to you know, sit at home on, on Zoom experiences, I do think that online experiences are here to stay, even though true nothing replaces face-to-face. -face. Uh, so that's super interesting. Um, predictions here. Um, so when we, when we asked our panel of Zoomer experience are here to stay, they're not quite as bullish as you all, um, but 85% said yes, uh, with a lot of people just not sure. Um, the other interesting thing is 57.7% of our respondents also think budgets are going to grow in 2021. 
um, which is really surprising because candidly, we expected that a lot of these budgets were going to shift back to in life, in real life experiences. Um, and what we see happening is, is not that way at all. Yes, in real life experiences are reopening, the budgets are accelerating for those, but budgets are also increasing for virtual experiences. So total experiential budgets are just booming right now. Uh, and people are taking a lot of these social, social and content budgets and putting them directly into, uh, into experiences, both virtual and in real life. We'll jump into some bonus insights. Now these are really data focused, uh, but these are insights about how brands are actually measuring these KPIs, how brands are actually optimizing for them. So we do something strange here at Any Road, uh, and I get a lot of questions about this. Um, people ask me, why do you measure net promoter score, right? Which is a pretty, pretty common thing in the industry now, prior to an experience. Why? One simple answer. We want to see a change. We want to see people who have no real opinion of a brand, don't like a brand, are lukewarm about a brand, who actually become brand promoters and start to love the brand because of these experiential engagements. And we've seen time and time again across tens of millions of experiences that we've powered that experiences, when transformative, have the ability to create this kind of brand love. So we created a thing called brand conversion rate. And brand conversion rate is literally the percent of attendees who were not big brand promoters who became brand promoters post experience as a direct result of that experience. And a lot of our partners use brand conversion rate as one of their core KPIs. Because if you can take people who might not know their brand, might not be a big fan, have no real opinion, and turn them into brand love, brand lovers and brand promoters as a result of virtual experiences, in real life experiences, this kind of deep engagement, then we consider that a, 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 a stunning success. Uh, then we can go a step forward and connect this directly to consumer spend and revenue to actually turn this into dollar amounts, but really brand conversion rate is where it all starts. So this is very key here. Um, turns out in-person experiences are still more powerful than online and virtual experiences, but it's close. It's, and we're tracking this constantly every single day across hundreds of thousands of attendees, across tens of millions of experiences, because we want to see like, are virtual experiences more powerful? No, they're not. They're, they're close, but in real life experiences still, still lead, the, lead the way. And I think this is really the crux of why brands are starting to open up in-person experiences again, while they still scale their virtual, because they bring in a slightly different type of attendee. And here's my favorite slide of the whole time. You can screenshot this. I will send this to everybody afterwards. It, this is a direct map of our millions of experiences pre-COVID versus online during COVID. And what you can see is just this incredible decentralization of consumers that we're able to connect with. So Pre-COVID, pre not that surprising, really focused around cities, really focused around uh, urban centers, uh, suburban centers. Once we hit COVID, we move, we, we totally blow these virtual experiences out of the water. And suddenly we see people engage in experiences that will never set foot in your store, that will never set foot in your brewery, that will never set foot in your in your company, uh, but are able to create this kind of connection, are able to actually be engaged uh, and, and able to, to turn into brand promoters no matter where they are. Um, I don't have the map here of international, but it's stunning to see people in small towns in Brazil be able to engage with companies in Europe that they, that they really love um, as a direct result of virtual experiences. Um, one last poll here, because I want to kind of get the read of the room. Uh, it is, how did our findings align with your own point of view? Um, so are we, did our finding, findings align very closely, somewhat closely, not even close, or I have no idea, not sure. Uh, I had no real opinion before. Um, just curious, uh, did, our, did our findings and our studies align with what you expected and, and your point of view? Give it one more second here.
Awesome. Uh, 42% very closely. We are on the same page, on the same wavelength, somewhat closely, 52%. Uh, 3% of you totally disagree with with uh, with what, what we found and are totally shocked. Um, that's not that much, but I love I, I love I love the different difference of opinion uh, and again I was I was personally really surprised by a lot of this stuff um, it was not necessarily totally aligned with my point of view I expected a huge shift back to uh, in real life experiences and it wasn't until I saw the deep engagement from the virtual experiences that I really understood why brands are continuing to double down on this so three big takeaways number one online experiences are here to stay. 85% believe they're here to stay. A majority believe budgets will actually grow in 2021. This is this parallels what we're seeing with our customers. Um, they're not going anywhere. The world has fundamentally changed. Number two, the tech landscape is fragmented. Yes, Zoom is super dominant. 50% of, uh, of respondents are using Zoom, but there's a long tail of 39 different tech providers. What does that mean to me? It doesn't really matter. Use something that works for you. Use something that's reliable. Use something that scales. And most importantly, use something that will get you that data. Um, measurement is a challenge. Demonstrating impact is the most common challenge cited by respondents, 46%. Marketers need to test different approaches, need to A-B test experiences the same way we would A-B test websites. Um, and ultimately, need to figure out what are these KPIs? Um, because if we don't know what those KPIs are, we're not going to be able to measure them. Um, so we have a couple of questions here uh, that I'm going to be answering. Um, thank you for everyone for your questions. I love this two-sided conversation. Uh, number one, as in-person events and offerings open up the open up and the country gets more comfortable being around other people, why do you think virtual events will last? I hope we address that. They're gonna they're gonna last because they work, right? They work for engagement. They are cheap to scale cheap relative to in-person experiences generally. And we've we've hosted uh, online experiences with some of our customers with tens of thousands of people. Uh, it's very hard to get 10,000 of people into one place in real life. Virtually, we can actually have unlimited people uh, as long as we have that content there. Um, so I do think the world's changed. Uh, if you ask my mom, she'll be like, well, of course I wanna go back to real life experiences, but I'm comfortable on Zoom now too. Business model question. What kind of revenue are you seeing for virtual events? Great question, Christian. Uh, first of all, I, I, I look at this in two ways. Number one is direct revenue through ticket sales. And we have customers that are making well over a million dollars a month on just paid experiences. Um, however, most of our, our customers don't look at this as direct revenue, they look at this as indirect revenue, right? So they're they're creating these experiences, maybe charging a dollar or two for them just to kind of, that eliminates drop-offs and no-shows. But ultimately, the point is not just to make money from the experiences themselves. The point is to build this engagement and, excuse me, and convert people into customers, whether they're selling them a car later on or a, pro a different kind of product or just actually increasing their lifetime value going forward. Uh, three quick questions. What are you hearing about trade show exhibits, booths? Are people still thinking, vir are people still thinking virtual and live events? Yeah, we're, we're seeing a lot of uh, trade shows try to do hybrid. And by hybrid, I mean virtual trade booths, virtual Q and A being able to network with people on an app, um, but also going in person. Um, I, I think it's this kind of interesting hybrid model. Uh, we'll see how, how well that works. I think some, some of the trade show industry is really ingrained in this uh, in-person engagement, um, but we're seeing a lot of organizations actually try to bring trade shows and exhibits and booths online and kind of reinvent that, you know, the whole like name tag and the scan your name tag thing. I do think that that's pretty antiquated. And I think there will be some great tech coming out to replace that. Uh, number two, will there be a recording of the webinar available? Thanks, Mike, for asking. Yes, there will be. We will send that to you after this webinar, uh, which will have this video. It will have the slides. If there's any, if you have any specific questions, you can tag us on Twitter at anyroad uh, or email me, Jonathan at anyroad.com. Uh, another quick question: Best platforms for ease of use for attendees and facilitators. I'm a big fan of Zoom. Why? Data, 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 data. First of all, Zoom plugs into Facebook Live and other platforms. So you can host something on Zoom and allow people to join in from other places. Second of all, it's all about the engagement. 
if I use Instagram Live, I don't even see who's coming. I don't see how often they, how, how long they spend on this, on the platform. I don't have these kinds of tools. I just don't have this in kind of, kind of engagement. With, with Zoom, I can actually have my AnyRoad instance plug into Zoom. And so I get all this really rich data uh, from all of you who are, who are joining. So afterwards I can see this many people came, this is how often they, this is how much time they spent on there. Here's who was engaged. Here's who came to the fir their first virtual experience with AnyRoad. Here's who comes to all of our webinars, thank you. And, uh, and really get really rich data there. Um, we have one last, uh, two last questions. Uh, talk about the hybrid model comp the hybrid model combo live and virtual, will hybrid be a fad? Great question. A lot of, lot, there's a lot of these talk about hybrid. Um, I'm gonna answer, I think the hybrid's two separate things though. One are experiences that you can attend in person or online. This is not necessarily new um, and it's really hard to optimize for both. So we're seeing conferences, we're seeing events, we're seeing concerts where you have some per people in person, and then you have a lot of people virtual watching it. Um, I think it's interesting. You can certainly amplify that reach, but usually what ends up happening is the, the organizers either optimize for people watching it virtually, in which case people say, why did I come to this in person in the first place? Or they optimize for in-person engagement and people watching it virtually are like, I'm just getting some weird camera angles. Um, the other version of hybrid, which is, which, is my favorite is multi-sensory. And by this, I mean, if if you are watching a some people drink wine on a webinar, that's not that interesting. If you're actually drinking the same wine with thousands of people or hundreds of people or tens of people all around while you all around the world, while you're listening to this amazing master sommelier talk about this wine and you are you are tasting, you are smelling, you are engaging. This is a multi-sensory approach. And I actually believe that that is the true hybrid experiences. We're seeing brands that are doing yoga where everyone is, is doing yoga at the same time. Again, this is not just sitting, watching something. This is actually fully multi-sensory engaged. And I think those kinds of hybrid experiences where we're actually sharing in an experience, that's the true hybrid that's really going to uh, change the game. We have a couple more questions that just came in. So I wanna, oops, wanna make sure I get to those. Where's this Q and A? Here we go. Uh, what type of experiences are doing the best? Um, frankly, consistency rules. So high volume, regular recurring experiences. When somebody just does one experience once a quarter, once a year, these are not working that well. It's important to build up a customer base, uh, build up, uh, build up a bunch of followers. The type of experience that are doing the base are the, doing the best are high volume, regular occurring experiences. The second part of that answer is the other kind of experiences that are doing the best are experiences that are tied to a certain type of consumer. So, are you targeting old people in Michigan? Figure out what kind of experiences old people in Michigan want. Are you targeting millennials in Florida? Figure out what kind of experiences millennials in, in Florida uh, are, are, are engaged by. And we can test this. You can A-B test this and get engagement. Turns out old people in, in Michigan and millennials in Florida probably might not be interested in the same exact experiences. So we want to really segment our audience and build experiences for them. Um, what type of platforms everyone said? Uh, 39 is a lot. I only know of 10. Uh, Ashley, I will get you that data if you ping me at jonathan at anyroad.com. 39, there are tons of, of digital platforms out there. Again, when it comes to when it comes to the platform, the tech is not the most important. The most important is what fits you, uh, what fits your scalability. Um, you don't want customers to be able to, to have to like download complex software. It turns out everyone has Zoom these days, but there are all these like WebEx, Blue Jeans Networks things where people have to like download drivers for their platforms. I'm against that, it's friction. Um, oh, great question. What are your thoughts on how hybrid events will work? Simultaneous in-person and virtual event or a virtual event will simply be a recorded playbook of the in-person event? Great question. I think that virtually just a, a recorded playback of an in-person event is a waste of time. That's like watching a YouTube video. That's not really an experience. When I th say experience, I mean something has to be live and ideally, engaging. Uh, and by engaging, we can have conversations, we can have Q&A, we can have discussions, we can have panels, we can have debates, we can have some sort of feedback mechanism where we have a two-sided experience. Again, it's hard. And this is 
early days. This is really new, uh, but I don't believe that recording something and playing it back, uh, like watching a video on YouTube, I don't believe that has ever that will ever have the same kind of engagement that an actual live experience will. Um, Ooh, how many marketers are struggling to prove ROI for events? Great question. We're going to finish this off with this because this is uh, near and dear to my heart. Uh, although if there's any more questions, we can just feel free to add them in. Many marketers are struggling to prove ROI for events. Um, when my, I got my start at Red Bull, uh, I was one of the first marketing hires in the United States. We were spending billions of dollars a year on experiences. Like the uh, this idea of you know, coming, bring your family to a Red Bull event. There are people jumping out of airplanes, going down mountains on tricycles, DJs playing, people are dancing, everyone's having an amazing time. But what's the ROI of this? We had to have 50,000 person people come to one of our events and we had no idea what the ROI was. Clearly it worked, right? Red Bull has by far number one market share, but we were spending billions of dollars a year here with no ROI data. So this is why I started Any Road. Um, we basically partner with VPs of marketing, CMOs, directors of marketing to power these and scale these experiences, but also pull in the data showing what that ROI is, optimizing it, segmenting customers, and actually showing which of these experiences are actually resulting in revenue increases. Um, most marketers are really struggling with this. This has been a thing far before I ever made it to Red Bull, um, but uh, we're really excited to partner with some of the best marketers in the world who are, uh, who are focused on this experiential engagement. Um, I want to thank everybody for coming. Uh, it's so great to, to spend time with you all uh, on this gorgeous Tuesday. You can always uh, send us an email at experiences at anyroad.com. I am Jonathan at anyroad.com. Uh, I read and respond to all messages because I live in my inbox. Um, you can also tweet at us at anyroad. Um, we will send this out tomorrow. We have lots of more resources on our on our website. If you're starting to, if you're just getting started with virtual experiences, or if you're at the point where you want to start scaling it, let's chat. We have a lot more data. I'd love to help. Um, have a fantastic day. I love you.